Hey everybody, on the Chess Today show, we're going to take a look back to the Leuven Belgium second leg of the uh, Euro, little mini Euro Rapid and Blitz part of the Grand Chess Tour that takes place uh, to, to kick things off for the Rapid and Blitz portion. I say the Euro portion because now the Sinkfield Cup also has a Rapid portion and it seems like Rapid and Blitz is is all the craze these days, so I doubt this is the last time we're going to see Magnus Carlsen winning a Rapid and Blitz event as part of the Grand Chess Tour. And certainly not the last time we're going to see Maurice Ashley and Magnus Carlsen give each other this look. Do you think Magnus Carlsen was using the plate on purpose there, or is it just the brilliance of our photographer, uh, Maria Emrilanova, uh, Miss Lova Lova, as uh, her friends call her. So Miss Lova Lova did a phenomenal job there on site capturing this hilarious moment. Uh, we're going to come back to that in just a second. But as you know, we start the show always with the Daily Puzzle. And that's what we're going to do right now. Let's get to it. Daily Puzzle time. What do we have? What do we have? What do we have? We have the infamous Daily Puzzle on chess.com. Looking at it here. For the first time, uh, obviously, we start with our with our tempo moves. If we're following our own advice, checks, captures, power moves, some sort of move that would take advantage of potentially the king being on this open diagonal. Queen a4 check is met by both b5 and even bishop d7. I don't really see a concrete reason why queen a4 check is is anything special. Um, if we're taking stock in the position, currently black is actually up a pawn, but if I had to guess his last move, it was maybe something like d takes c4? Or maybe, um, yeah, how would you get a position like this, right? With the knight on e5 and the pawn on c4. This is obviously, okay, yeah, there you go. I just looked up at the title, Catalan opening theory. Uh, good good call, Dan. Way to, way, to be, way to have a heads up play today. I wish I had some coffee here. Uh, the... Um, the other main move to consider is just e3, and where's that pony going, right? e3, the knight's going to go to f5, and then we also lack a little bit of a concrete follow-up. Why am I not seeing this puzzle here? It's, it's Monday, is it not? Somebody's having a case in the Mondays, uh, but it's Monday. That means it should be easy, right? I told you I needed some coffee. All right, got the coffee. Dan, I got your... Uh Almond, soy, mocha, frappa, chin, extra drizz, no whip. Almond milk? They said it was almond milk. How do, you, how do you know? Have you tasted it? No, I haven't tasted it. Why don't you taste it before you give me something that's maybe has dairy in it? I, but I have IBS. Did I ask you whether you, you know, lactose intolerant or not? What, you want me to have lactose on the show in front of everybody? You know I'm on a diet. Almond milk. It tastes like almond. Okay, thanks. The intern, you know, I mean, you order something, you expect it to be done right. Am I right, people? Come on here. It's not even almond milk. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have issues later on. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Can a guy be on a dairy-free diet for unnecessary reasons and then judge people about it? Can he do that anymore? Is that not a thing you're allowed to do anymore? You know, if you want to feel better than other people, make up a diet. No reason to do it, right? You're not actually intolerant to gluten. You don't have celiacs or you're not dairy intolerant. Just make up a diet. Tell people, yeah, I'm dairy-free right now. It just allows you to just judge your way. I learned that from J.P. Sears. J.P. Sears is my guru. Um, so, yeah, I just judge people all the time. And that, that intern, let's just say that's the last coffee he's bringing, okay? That's the last time you mess up that order. Anyway... All right, jokes aside, back to the daily puzzle. I um, I literally have no idea what the winning move is here. There must be something obvious I'm just missing with queen a4 check. Be uh, it must be e3 first. e3, the knight goes to f5, and then what? I know Sam is doing this on purpose. He's making the puzzles harder. I literally have no idea what the answer is here. I need I need this coffee. Oh my lordy lord. Uh, I feel totally ridiculous. Queen a4 check. B5. Queen, there's no follow up. E3 seems like the only move on the board that would actually improve the position to remove the knight. But after queen a4 check, bishop d7. 
Oh, duh. After E3, he moves the knight. I just trade queens on D8 and win F7. I told you it was brain fog. I didn't say... I didn't say that it was a... Oh, wait. Okay, so he goes there. So I have to take first. I have to take first. Okay. You take first, and then you go to Chop Town, then you go to Fork Town, and all is right in the world. Man, I feel like we should just restart this whole Chess Today show so that nobody remembers how that just went down. <laughs> but all right. Uh, the daily puzzle has been solved. You have also all been challenged to go ahead and jump on and make sure you solve the Chess.com daily puzzle every day airy day. That's how the cool kids say it. They, they, less syllables, but it takes more effort. It's like BRB. Same amount of syllables as B right back, but it causes potential confusion. And if they don't know the acronym BRB, you again get to judge them for their lack of knowledge over something that's silly and stupid. So airy day takes more effort than every day, but we'd be solving, solving the daily puzzle airy day. All right, let's check in with the chat. Just make sure that everyone knows I'm not totally ignoring it. Uh, what's going on? Hey, MTR. He likes it. Uri Day. You know he does. Coffee enthusiast and drinking Starbucks. What's up with that? That's right. If you don't check out my weekly podcast with the one and only James Montemagno, then you don't know that I am a coffee. I am a coffee. I, I can't say aficionado. He's an aficionado. I, I enjoy a good cup of joe, and I've learned to appreciate and not appreciate things like this. But again, you know, the intern offered to pick it up. What am I going to do? Say no? I'm going to make a special order and try to make sure that it's dairy-free. But no, seriously, they have this new almond milk thing, and I really am dairy-free, like jokes aside. Um, and so it's kind of tasty. If anybody here is using nut milks to replace their lack of dairy, cashew milk, almond milk, very rarely is it done well. And I think it's not a bad little thing. Now, this has way too much sugar in it. I do not recommend it for anybody, but that's what's going on. Um, so let's see. Uh, Chess Home says, do you think MC will reach 3,000 in Blitz, Danny? Well, I don't know. That's a good question. Let's go to 2700chess.com, shall we? So what's going on with Blitz? What's he at? He's at 2947. The answer is no. It, just like people said, is he going to reach 2900 in, in Classical? I mean, the, the chances of reaching 3,000 at Blitz and the what that would require in regards to consistent performances and not even giving up draws to a bunch of people that are also really, really darn good at Blitz, I just think the answer is no. So I just... I don't think that I don't think that that is a, a reality in regards to somebody crossing an official threshold of over three thousand. Maybe in like mid tournament performance, is it possible? Maybe, but um, but I, I tend to doubt it. So uh, that's uh, first Twitch question. Hey Z Nation Chess, I'm having a pretty decent day. It's Monday. I'm back on the work train. Oh, you know what I mean. You know you get it. Uh, I just noticed that Maurice is for... That's the whole point of why we're discussing the picture and this uh, and, and the brilliance that was this moment and how Maria <laughs> captured it. And, I mean, there are, there are so many things you could add to this. In fact, uh, somebody on our own team, right? If we, if we head over to the, to the article already, um, I don't even know who did this, set up some sort of mini, mini meme... Um, mini meme about this and, and, you know, obviously highlighting the, the uh, tension-filled conversation that we know went down between Maurice Ashley and Magnus Carlsen last week. So there was a, it's a great read. Obviously, Peter Docker's reporting on site. I don't know that it ever gets any better. Uh, but so here we go, a very, very smooth. And uh, obviously, many of you have already seen that on Twitter. Uh, and uh, pretty, pretty funny stuff. So, um, so many things you could say about this picture. Pretty funny stuff. Uh, but yeah, you guys, maybe we should do a little meme contest. Come up with your own and let us know what it is, and maybe we'll give away a prize. So, Miss Lova Lova is in the Chess TV chat. Um, of course, I play Exploding Kittens. All right, I love Exploding Kittens. Um, favorite card? Thanks for asking. Let me think. Uh, as far as like, are we going like effectiveness? I mean, I think like. You know, forcing somebody, what's the card where, like, I think the most effectively used card is the, is the card that gets you just get to skip your turn and you don't have to play a card that round, right? I mean, like, that's key. Um, but then there's also the one um, that my, uh, my five-year-old daughter likes to use. Oh, yeah, the nope, the nope card, right? You throw the nope card. She uses the nope card even when it doesn't help her, right? We're playing Exploding Kittens, me and my kids, and, like, you know, one of my kids you know, wants to get a card from the other person and she just nopes it for no reason. And they're like, Hazel, why did you do that? And she's like, nope. Like she might as well drop the mic. She's like, nope, 
deal with it, right? It's crazy. Hazel is Hazel is an exploding kittens um, nut. She loves it. And yes, it isn't an appropriate game to play with your five-year-old, but that's my decision to make with my children, not yours to judge. Thank you. Um, oh, the members did make some great photoshops. Peter Dockers just said that in the Chess TV chat, so that's awesome. Let's check it out. I didn't even know that. Uh, Grand Chess Tour standings right now, so you got Magnus up on top. After the, I didn't even know this. This is important to talk about. So, I mean, one good question for the chat is who do we think is going to win here? I mean, can anybody slow down Magnus Carlsen? This year, unlike the previous year, he's actually playing the Sinkville Cup in St. Louis. If you don't remember, he didn't play that event because he was busy preparing for the World Championship. So, um, you know, I, I, at this point, it looks like the biggest, it seems like the biggest event of the year when there's not a World Championship going on it has to be these Grand Chess Tour you know, this series, and, and obviously I don't think Magnus Carlsen would have any, any motivation to take any other tournament more seriously than this, and I expect him to hold on. He, he seems to be really in the driver's seat already. That's pretty pretty impressive score there. Um, all right, so what do we got? Oh, we got it. Here we go. Somebody somebody played the head switch game. All right, we're going to give away a diamond membership right here to somebody. So this is going to be a one-year diamond membership. No more of this one-month stuff. I'm going to pick my favorite. We're going to give away a one-year diamond membership. This is good. I appreciate the, you know, this says a lot, right? This says, you know, you've got, um, you know, who really is who? Aren't we all the same? Are we all embracing our own meaninglessness, fullness of life? Is there any reason to judge anybody anymore? That's what that picture says to me. I love it. What do we got else? What else we got? Let's go. Oh, here we got, uh, a ch wait, is this, a, is this an actual, I wanted flowers, Arg Maurice, I don't even remember this. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I think Clinks. I think this guy just gets the one-year diamond membership. Who is this guy? I'm gonna give him a diamond membership. This guy has just gone nuts. This is phenomenal stuff here. Accordion. Um, okay, I love it. I love the Neo and the Architect. One of the best scenes ever from the Matrix tr trilogy. Phenomenal stuff. Is this the? What is this? Oh, this is Power Rangers. Oh my, that's awesome. <laughs> Maurice is. Well, who's the Power Ranger? What's the name of the talking head again? Like. Zed or Z Zorg or what, what is his name? This one's a little bit creepy. This is a little like Constantine. Remember the movie with Keanu Reeves, right? Where he's like fighting, or is that Devil's Advocate? Where like people get really weird and Al Pacino goes crazy and then like people's faces become like demon faces. You guys know what I'm talking about? I don't know that I dig this one. That's that's a negative mark against Clinks right there. That's That's a little weird. All right, I think that might be it. Okay, so Clinks, you're getting a one-year diamond membership just for bringing me some laughs. Appreciate it, Home Slice. Um, that's some good stuff, so we'll make sure we take care of that now. Well, uh, at this time uh, is when we usually get a few people in the chat complaining that we haven't done enough chess yet. We've solved the daily puzzle, but I really I only have one daily chess game that I currently have the move on, and I'm losing that game. Um I don't know that I'm on pace to do anything but lose this game. This was a 960 game gone wild. I just completely miscalculated this moment here after knight to d5. I was liking the position, felt like I was winning the bishop pair, right? It just seemed like things were on track. Um, and then I took and he t and he took with check on e7. I just I just completely missed knight takes e7 check. Just right, not even a there's no excuses. Only results here. And in this case it's going to be a bad result. So um, so that was bad. I did my best to maybe complicate things and try to create some compensation. You know, I flirted with the idea of a mating net on the light squares, but we all knew that it was total. It was a total bluff. He plays f3, I back, back up the bishop, and now I'm already on the defensive. I mean, is there any way for me to continue to get any kind of pressure here uh, against e, uh, e, uh, e dog? E dog? Ed dog? Ed dog? Um, He's always in the chat, and he always says he's not going to be in the chat, right? He always says, like, hey, guys, I'm not going to be in the chat, and then he's always in the chat. I bet he's listening right now. Um, so I am going to play some Blitz today. Yeah, John HS wants to know that, but if I, don't, if I don't have enough daily chess moves to make and enough chess instruction to offer, we'll do a few games interacting with the fans, and let's get, let's get some fun stuff going on, play a couple games in the live chess server. But, um, yeah, I... Uh, I am I am advance. You're spamming the chat with the same message. Um, so I you know I get it. I get that you want to play me, dude. Um, let's see what do we got. Wumble, Danny. They are from Reddit and just copied. 
Ah, okay, so that guy didn't even make them. Okay, so I see. M. Kiva and Huomo are telling me that this guy doesn't necessarily deserve a diamond membership um, since they were just they were just copied from Red. I think I'm going to give him a diamond membership anyway because, you know, what the hey, and I'm not going to go track down users' usernames from Reddit. So that'll tell them next time to go ahead and uh, post some of those directly, I guess. Um, Okay, apparently we've got, I'm getting notified by the chat that I'm giving up on this thread too early, though. Okay, let me make my move here, and then we're going to pop back to page two of that, of that article, because apparently there were even more. There's even more. So how am I going to handle this position? When you're down the exchange, you want to create complex, you know, you want to create some tension just so that it's not so easy for your opponent to, to convert. Um, so one thing, you know, you consider is a move like H5, but if he just plays rookie seven, H4, and he just takes here, you know, I can't go this complicated. This is called just suicide, right? That just loses. So there's some sort of intermezzo here, like a check and then a knight g5. You know, but still, it's all just it's all just a big a big waste of time to to play a couple moves that make you feel good. You know, really, what I need to do, the disciplined thing to do, is to just stop him from infiltrating on the e file. If my king was over here, I could play like king to d7 and stop this move, and then maybe try to keep my knight in one of these annoying spots. But given that that is not the case, I think I'm just going to play knight to e6 and uh, and call it a day. So here we go, knight e6. All right. So before we dive into the game, the chat, we're going to play, or not the chat. Yeah, we're going to take on on members in the chat. Um, with a few games here on the Chess Today show, but before we do, uh, we, we'll, we'll head back to this news topic that everybody is having a lot of fun discussing, of course, Magnus Carlsen dominant. And again, I know I didn't, get, I didn't get a lot of love on Twitter when I said, you know, look out, like Maurice has really sort of poked the bear uh, with Magnus, and, and he's just going to crush everybody from here on out. I called it before, even when he was having a bad day, like the day after the whole thing. And he just, you know, it's like Magnus is just on a tear now, so... Um, so this is fun stuff, but okay, let's dive into this. Apparently, the the second page of comments is also pretty hilarious. I think I like the Power Rangers one the best, actually. It's it just feels pretty funny. Okay, so what, what's page two? Okay, here we go. Aha, that's a good one. And this is this is this seems really appropriate because Maurice actually actually looks a little bit like Lawrence Fishburne, right? At least in that picture, like in that picture. If this was taken out of context and somebody who knew zero about chess or about, you know, the, the photo with Maurice Ashley, I think that somebody might in a moment be like, what is, what is going on with this picture that's clearly from the Matrix? So <laughs> that's a good one. The Conehead, Dan Aykroyd, Coneheads. I like that. I'll take that. Um, okay, Magnus Carlsen mirroring himself. Not bad. And then they're both, are they pointing to each other or are they both pointing to the fact that Geary looks... It's the, the symmetry of this picture is really something to behold, right? There's, there's a lot of sym symmetrical action here. Um, I like that one. That's a good one. Here he is doing the issue with Maurice. I like that. I like that face. Okay, we got more. There we go. Here we go. He's serving, he's serving Maurice some hors d'oeuvres. These are getting better and better. Also good. What is, is that Nicolas Cage? Who is that? I don't know who that is, but okay, we'll take it. Okay, again, I already saw this one. Not a huge fan of that one. Again, kind of creepy. And there we go. The uh, the full the full photo with Maurice's face sticking on it. And uh, we'll see if we're running out. Okay, we've got more. <laughs> we got a doll with it. This is good stuff. I love this. Uh, taking pictures of the art. So what? Somebody is breaking down something here. I don't understand what they're trying to show with the close up. Okay, I don't get that. Anyway, a lot of comments. A lot of comments here. Okay, I think we've I think we finally run out. This would have been good putting Maurice's face here. So, all right, well that was fun. All right, everybody, I'm gonna hop over to the chat, say hi to everybody. Let's let's play some let's play some blitz, um, some bullet, some blitz. Who knows? Um, have some fun. So uh, thanks everybody for being here. Just Ardvark, Wool Wolmo, Larson ninety nine, Q Tunneler, everybody on Twitch. Thanks for being here. Z Nation Chess. 
Uh, Z Nation wants me to play the Caro. Okay. Your wish is my command. I think we just need to mute I am advanced. I am advanced seems to have just recently discovered the copy paste functionality that exists on computers and he's um he's uh he or she is is letting it be known that she that she really really enjoys he or she really enjoys copy and pasting. So I am advanced that's your that's your sarcastic warning from me to stop spamming the chat with copy paste functionality. Appreciate it. Here we go. Live chess, yeah? It's like so I'm here to play. All right, so who do we got here? We've got a lot of people in the chess TV chat, but here they go. Here they come. And John H is uh, 10 minutes? Bro, I'm not playing you 10 minutes, a 10 minute game. Like, what is, like, what, what, what is this, right? I mean, if you, if you want to be the first person to get a challenge, why is everyone challenging me to 10 minute? I don't understand. Um, Okay, maybe I'll accept John H's challenge. Oops, that was the wrong person. I accepted this guy. And what we'll do is we'll give me one minute. So I'm going to play this guy 10-1. And then we'll get somebody else's game going too. John H has come back with a three-minute game. There you go. All right, so now we got a simul here. I'm playing somebody 10-1 in a simul, and I'm playing John HS in a three-minute game. Okay, what do we got here? We got a Petrov. Love. Okay, here we go. He's back. The uh, the person with 10 minutes on his clock is back. Gonna be fun. Gonna be fun. We have a simul going. So here we have a Petrov. We'll back up and take a quick look at both of these actually afterwards. Should be fun. John HS is uh, not making the best decisions with his development that I've ever seen anyway. And not to say it's the worst I've ever seen, but not the best I've ever seen. As soon as you start bringing that queen in front of the bishops, you are asking for it. Uh, and so we, we have one apiece some tricks in the Petrov and we'll see how quickly we can okay so Mr. Uh, Mr. 10-1 has, uh, has made his move so hopefully I can play fast enough on that game to not lose on time um, either that or I just need to need to take care of business over here ASAP take care of business ASAP we'll see how he helps me here I guess we'll just uh, what's the point we'll just trade okay well not every day we get to play a bullet simul let's get a little bell ringer let's ring a bell right Dun, dun, dun. Sometimes you checkmate. And sometimes you get checkmated. That seems like it goes on a t-shirt somewhere. Okay, so John HS just... Uh, I'll pre-move it out. This will be fun. Okay. So John HS, quick advice. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Again, the best way you can improve if you guys are spending so much time playing Blitz and Bullet online, which I can't discourage you from doing given that it's my website. It's awesome. <laughs> but uh, if you're a, a, an improving and, and serious chess player, obviously we know that as uh, John Bartholomew says on his channel often, you, you know, you do as he says, not as he does. You can't play a bunch of Blitz and Bullet and expect to really improve or even be able to recognize the critical thinking issues that you have you know not just the chess is a game of pattern recognition but that's not just the patterns the x's and o's on the board tactics and strategical uh formations that repeat but actually you know finding your own weaknesses and your own and your own thinking and, and where those patterns repeat so if you're playing blitz and bullet at the very least you have to make sure you play the openings to, to the best of your ability so that you get something out of the game and, and it's not just a, a big fest of who plays faster with the mouse so I'm going to assume on that note that you're a Petrov player who's already following that advice and that you're actually trying to play the Petrov here and not just accidentally playing like a copycat opening. 
um, you know, but again, like, there's a reason why we don't play the copycat opening, because eventually you run out of moves, right? You're the one who loses in these games, and obviously if you play knight here, then you have even bigger problems with discovered checks on the board. But even with what you did, right, you, you played this move queen to e7, this is, okay, this is actually almost okay for you if you don't mess up here. But already, the queen on e7 blocks the bishop on f8, and as I like to say, it's the old lady who swallowed the fly. One bad decision creates a chain reaction of disasters. So you spend the next several moves trying to undo that problem, and then that gets you in trouble in other areas. You know, if you, if you took on e4 with check, and then, you know, I don't know, just like got developed and try to get the queen somewhere else, you're, you're probably fine here. I mean, this is like not, not losing for black. Uh, but once you go here, and then and then we developed, and you end up having more problems where where you realize that the e file's been opened, you know the queen is is not where she should be, and and all of your development is slow after that. So again, if you did this just by accident, playing super fast against me because you were nervous and excited to play on the show, I get it. But again, that's just like you're wasting your time if you're not at least trying to play blitz and bullet like it really matters. And you know, unfortunately, in America, we you know we've started this trend where. You just always encourage kids, hey, just keep practicing, buddy, and you'll be the greatest player ever. It's just not true, okay? Because things are really, really hard to get really good at. And also, participation trophies just for trying, when often you're building bad habits in the process, is really not very, it's not good, right? I mean, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, this isn't a huge judgment on our entire culture. It is secretly, but okay. The point is, like, Practice makes perfect if you treat your practice like you demand perfection. Then, you know, then, then everything you're doing is about building good habits and you're actually struggling to, ch to challenge yourself. If you're basically just playing 10,000 Blitz games and every one of them makes you a worse chess player because you don't follow principles and you just play super fast, then how do you expect to ever play in real games and then all of a sudden you're just going to turn off the switch and now all those bad habits you built up over time are going to go away? Not really, right? I mean, so again, I actually really, really don't like that. That that sort of mindset where people believe that you, can, as long as you just keep doing something, the amount of time you put in is enough. It's just not true. You have to be deliberate in your practice and know what you're trying to improve, and treat your practice like it matters. Or don't be surprised if you can't break bad habits when it counts. So that's my lecture on that. And this is just a bad opening. So if you were just playing this opening, I mean, you're just you're just going to get killed here on the e file, and you know. So play your openings that you know to play, or. If this is an opening you know to play, then then just don't play queen e7. Because now you play queen d7, which also probably, uh, probably, probably you should play queen d8 or d5 here. Try to at least solidify the knight before the e-file becomes a mess. You know, so you play queen d7, and then we get even more problems, right? And, and anyway, so bishop e7, bishop e5, knight here, d5, and, you know, simul, simul excluded. This is just already a lost position for black. So... The other game, what was it? I don't even remember what this game was. What was it? Oh, it was a scotch. And then he played also G6, also a bad move, yeah. So, again, you know, it's hard, you know, for me to, and as, as uh, the great Nezmet Dinoff would say, he who analyzes Blitz is a fool, you're looking at him, okay? Nezmet Dinoff didn't know that things would evolve to the point that they do, where most people expect to get better. Like, I get, I get somebody who tweets at me on Twitter, and he's like, I play lots of games on chess.com and I'm not getting better. Like, like it's my fault. Like, do what are you gonna do for me? And I'm like, like, do you understand how ridiculous that question is, right? I mean, it's like saying, I, I don't even know what it's saying. It, it, it's, it just, it doesn't. It's not even the the doctor comparison I've made before doesn't even apply. Where you just show up to the doctor and say, I don't feel my best. Make me feel better. And he's like, what? Like, what are you? Do you have any other things you can say? So the point is, like, also, if all you're doing is playing chess and you're like not studying, you're not you're not doing any of like the tools, or you're not trying to get better, then like you're not just gonna get better. Like, it doesn't just happen that way. You know what I mean? I, it, you don't just you don't just roll out of bed. You know, you got you got to do CrossFit, right? You got to exercise. You don't just you don't just like get better because you are. Okay, you actually have to work at it. And so, if you're gonna be playing blitz you got to start playing your openings like they matter to you, or all you're doing is playing a bunch of fast chess that builds up bad habits, and you're not getting better as a chess player. You're just not going to get better. So, again, you can't play g6 against the scotch. you got to take and open up. So sorry if I'm being a little too critical, a little too harsh on the fans today, and you guys are like, wow, Danny's really letting us have it today. But honestly, you know, somebody who was making his abusive Russian racist alcoholic chess coach screwdrivers at the age of 13 
you haven't seen criticism, okay? This is just funsies reminding you that, hey, all those little, like, dream bubbles we live in where we think that just by spending time playing chess we're going to get better, it's just not true. You have a lot of work to do if you want to become a good chess player. It's time to start. There you go. Time to start. In fact, where do you start? Here's a good place. I'll recommend it right now. Uh, one of the reasons we created what you see right here, the study plans, which um, were recently completed, actually, up to, like, the master level, is not, I mean, okay, this is not as, what you would really like is for you to, like, click on something, and then you solve a puzzle, then it takes you to the next page, and just literally navigates you through the site, okay? Right now, we don't have that functionality, but what we do have is a, a detailed recommendation of, like, what you would do if you were, if you were like, okay, I'm really trying to develop a well-balanced approach to chess, and work on the different areas of the game that I know I need to understand, and that's not just, you know, openings, but middle games, and end games, and tactics, and, and where do I put in my time? Time and why and where and at what point am I am I now transitioning to really being more critical in my own game review? That's why we have these study plans, okay? And they are designed to sort of recommend you and sort of hold your hand through a lot of the different content and a lot of the different stuff that exists on Chess.com um, for w whatever rating level you're at and uh, and to help push you to have somebody who's kind of guiding you like a coach, you know? And and again. It's just difficult to expect results if all you're doing is playing Blitz and Bullet. So I think maybe that guy on Twitter, maybe that's why I took out my bad mood on you guys. Again, it's Monday and the intern got me some dairy. All right, blame the intern. But that's just the truth, all right? Let's get serious about chess improvement. And there are a lot of resources out there, but you, know, you, you can't just play Blitz and Bullet and not even play your best openings because... You're just trying to flag somebody and then expect those habits to just leave you when it matters. Like you, you know, I actually when I'm playing when I'm playing a serious bullet match, you guys can check my history. I mean, okay, like I'm not a professional chess player anymore, but seriously, like, look, I mean, I'll, I'll play bullet, and I'm gonna play I'm gonna play bullet like I actually care about the. If you check my history, like I don't play. I'm not Hikaru. I'm not. He's at a level where it, what I'm saying doesn't apply to him. He literally plays B3 and then G3 and whatever. Like, when I play, go look at my history. This is exactly what I would play right here. What you're looking at right here is what I would try to play in an OTB game. And already, I already don't like my approach. But the point is, I'm trying to play chess like as if I would, if I was going to play this position overall. Now, okay, it's not perfect. And, of course, with more time on the clock, I probably would do things a little bit different. Uh, but I actually like my position. And... The point is that I'm going to try to play chess just faster. So you see the difference. It's still chess, but it's just faster. So if I end up losing on time in the beginning as you guys are just getting into bullet, that's okay. But then push yourself to go a little faster. But play your openings. Play a position that you would justify playing against a, a much stronger player. That's what I'm doing. And like, go look at my history. I play the scotch like every time. Like, very rarely am I messing around where I'm not playing the same opening that if I was playing a blitz or bullet match against Nakamura that I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to do the same thing. And, and so, um, again, like Hikaru's situation, if you look at somebody who's like literally like playing, Hikaru plays bad openings in, in, uh, in bullet, period. There's no, I mean, but again, he's Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, but by the way, when he plays bullet against Magnus Carlsen, and if you're talking like speed chess championship matches, you're not going to see the same the same total you know total BS on the board. I mean, you're not going to see it. You're going to see them actually try to play some serious stuff. And so my opponent's giving up a piece, and now he's going to get checkmated with a sweet and sassy little combination. I like to you know I like to do the like the butter and the sriracha and the honey sauce, you know, and you put some lime in it. You mix it all up. You throw it on the wings. You throw the wings on the barbecue. Ah, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, get over here. Yo, get over here. Have some wings over there. I made a recipe over there. Have some, uh, that's what I like to do with my wings. So um, that was a sweet and sassy little sauce. And if I was going to play this opening, like, okay, I would back up and look at it and, like, okay, probably knight f6, anticipating d4. Maybe I should have played this first. I don't know. But I tried to get a structure that I would actually try to play. I know that this is a dangerous structure because if I can't back up c4, 
with the move c6, then my pawn chain is going to be destroyed. But so I tried to like, I tried to remaneuver as quickly as I could to get a better setup. This is called a wedge setup, where you replace the middle of a pawn chain with a piece. You know, now I know, I know I've weakened the e4 pawn, but I spent the next few moves trying to protect it. I protect it with bishop f5. He's aware that if he gives me some sort of attacking idea, so he plays h3. I don't know if that was his best. But okay, we played a real game. Is it a blunder-filled game? You bet your butt it is. If we ran this through our cheat detection system, I'm sure I made some tactical errors. But I actually tried to play an opening that I thought is good. And that's what you have to do. You have to pull yourself out of this little rut you're in where you believe that in Blitz and Bullet, you can play like anything. And that that's what the game is. That's not true. That's not what the best players do. And even with bad openings, Sekaro Nakamura wants to play the same level of tactics that he does in Blitz and Bullet as he does in high-level games. Does he? No, but he does his best to do it. So you have to have the same um, standards for yourself, and then these games can actually help you improve at least a little bit. Are they going to help you improve as much as a standard game? No, but at least they're doing something now, and you're not just like blundering out of the opening after just a couple moves. Has this rant been sufficient for you? Brought to you by... Uh Brought to you by not enough coffee and too much CrossFit on a Monday morning. Has this rant been sufficient for you? Let me check the chat. Yeah, they blacked me out like an hour ago. Yeah, 1E4 says you're analyzing bullet games now, Dan. I actually do, and you're wrong. Again, Nesmith Dinoff and these guys, like, again, if you're playing, okay, if you're doing this on your bullet, and you just, and, and maybe you're really fast and you think this is fun, or you're one of these guys who does this, good for you. Okay, again, then your bullet is not any better than, like, a video game for your chess. Is it contributing to your chess? No. I'm not ever saying that bullet is contributing more to your chess than studying, you know, an endgame book or looking at Mikhail Bodvinik's greatest games. Or I'm not justifying that. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that the old school mindset and mentality that Blitz and Bullet is bad for your chess is not only wrong, but they're also short-sighted and in denial of like where the game is today. Where the game is today is people want rapid Blitz and Bullet chess. They want to play the fast games because that's what they have time for. And they also want to feel like they're getting better. I already went on a rant and challenged people and said, Look, uh, I, I said, look, if you really want to get better, use our study plan. But what I'm saying is if you're going to be playing Blitz and Bullet Chess, what I just proved to you, and again, look at my history, I don't mess around. People mess around against me, but I don't, I don't do that. Like, I try to actually do that. And I think if you do the same, you can draw small conclusions. And over time, am I analyzing all my bullet games? No, but if I played like a thousand bullet games in one line of the scotch, that actually is helpful to my intuition and understanding of that line. You know, it, it's in there. It's in there somewhere. Maybe it's buried, you know, in the matrix, but it's there. So there you go. Um, Danny, please chill. Danny, please chill. Danny, please chill. Magnus Carlson. I, I still can't get over how great that username is. It's a username that I wish I came up with. Magnus. So. Yeah, exactly. You were told by the same master who also tells people that, you know, they should never play Blitz. That master is wrong. And he's also impractical about what the truth is about the way people are going to spend their time. So I'm not saying that a master is wrong if he says Bullet is not the best for your chess improving. But they're wrong if they say you can't learn anything. Ask Akara Nakamura. Okay? End of discussion. Danny drops proverbial mic. And again, I deal with a lot of these coaches, a lot of the old school mindset. It's just like... You know, it's just not in touch with the way people are playing chess online. Chess is too accessible. They're also the same people who are still in doubt about whether or not this internet thing is here to stay. Okay, look, it's just not true. And I'm not saying that you should play hours of bullet. If you really want to improve, I already told you, go spend, if you have, if you have two hours a day on chess.com and you said, Danny, what would be the most useful thing of those two hours to get better? Believe me, not a single one of the things I mentioned would be, would be play bullet chess. So that's not what I'm saying. If you have two hours on chess.com every day, I would have a much different list for you than go play two hours of bullet chess. It wouldn't even include any bullet chess. It may include some blitz, depending on, like, if we're working on your openings at that time, and I think if you play some blitz, you can get some opening practice, whatever. But overall, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that people use their time to the best of their ability, and at the very least, if you're going to play blitz and bullet, play openings that matter to you, openings you would play in a tournament, and try to draw some conclusions out of those games. Your, your, your learning curve will be faster and you won't be wasting your time literally with bullet that's all there you go um bgh3 says he loves that rant he needs to make a clip of it and post it on reddit go for it bjh and thanks for subscribing on on uh, twitch by the way bj love it man loves that you're a sub 
Danny, we are so afraid of you being angry. That's Mobuso. I'm not, I'm not angry, okay? You won't like me when I'm angry. No, um, I'm very passionate. I'm super passionate about teaching and about life. And I, had a, I crushed my workout today. I crushed it. You want to know what it was? It was five rounds of eight overhead uh, walking lunges. But you have to hold a 45-pound weight plate while you do walking lunges. And then you, then you have to do 95-pound thrusters. So, like, it was you do eight walking lunges, then ten thrusters. Eight walking lunges, ten thrusters. I finished in just under ten minutes. It was slow. There were people that finished it in, like, six and a half, seven minutes. I'm not the best. I'm not the best CrossFitter. That's just the truth. I don't, I don't eat that well, you know. I have a beer at night, you know. It's just the truth. All right. So, um, but I do love CrossFit. Uh, that's, that's a horrible joke, Verm666. That is a horrible joke that I'm not even going to read. But it actually, it actually works. It makes sense. So, so I appreciate that. Um, so there you go. Uh, anyway, thanks, everybody. Today was a slightly longer chest today than normal. I am going to be here tomorrow. Um, is exercise vital to becoming a better chess player? I don't know if it's vital. I think, I think uh, right brain, left brain, the more we understand about having a healthy balance and good blood flow, I think that a lot of those guys are in pretty good shape for a reason, and I do believe that it is fatiguing when you're doing something like that for a long time. Is it vital? Like, I think, I think that would be overstepping it to say it's vital. I think, I think exercise is important. I think when I exercise, I'm a more patient person, and, you know, just for me, it works, but I also, I don't think exercise is vital for being a better chess player. Um, you know, maybe it's good for being healthy overall, but that's another discussion. Danny, did you just say you love cross-dressing? No, I said cross-fit, not cross-dressing. Crossdressing is another show. Catch me on late night. Um, all right, everybody. This has been a lot of fun. The uh, the, uh, the conversations are going to, I think we're going off a little bit off track here. But hopefully you appreciate that rant. Sorry if I sounded a little bit frustrated. I wasn't upset at anybody. John HS, thank you for the game. Um, and I wasn't trying to pick on you. Who was the other guy? Uh, awesome, awesome dude, whatever, that guy. Thanks to him. Also, I was just trying to give you guys some advice and... Uh, thanks to Magnus Carlson and um, thanks to Magnus Carlson and Maurice Ashley for bringing us some pretty entertaining chess over the last couple of weeks. I, I don't, you know, whatever. Regardless of of people's thoughts about everything that went down, I've certainly given mine. We're not going to go into it even more, but I, I think there's no denying that you know there was something to that, and it was interesting. We'll see how that plays out, and it brought the attention around these events and around everything to another level. And just by coincidence, we get this great follow-up picture courtesy of Miss Lova Lova, the legend herself. Uh, follow Miss Lova Lova on Twitter, by the way. Uh, uh, Maria actually is, um, she's a staff member for chess.com now. She travels and is basically, you know, along with helping us do a lot of stuff to, to bring our content into Russian, by the way, that's some of the stuff that Maria does for chess.com. She also is on site and, uh, basically kind of like our professional photographer. It kind of just happened. And, uh, you know, so we just kind of got lucky or not luck. Maria is really good and caught this picture. And I don't think it gets any better than that. This picture is so good by Maria. It makes you wonder if she Photoshopped it. That's how perfect the timing was. And apparently it's like it's at the top of the Photoshop contest on Reddit right now. This picture is. So that's pretty funny. All right, everybody. Peace. This has been way too long of a show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for putting up with Danny as usual. Love you all. Uh, and uh, go to chess.com. Oh, first thing we got to do before we go, let's check out the TV schedule. I always like to do that before I leave you hanging because we actually do have some interesting stuff this week I wanted to shout out. Uh, we have... So tomorrow, we have uh, another Chess Today show with yours truly. Then what you see right now at, at 3 p.m. is actually going to be at 11 a.m. So pretty much right after the Chess Today show, uh, Danny Wrench, and it'll be John Urschel, the football player, NFL player. Um, I'm going to scroll past this thing here if I can. Oh, no, it's, 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 making a, it's making a mirror effect. Sorry about that. I don't know what to do. Okay, I'm going to get out of it. Anyway, but John Urschel and I will be on tomorrow at 11 a.m., and then you have Urschel versus Hutch on Wednesday. So those are the things I wanted to show. I'm going to leave the Chess TV show. Sorry, I didn't mean to create that little mirror capture effect. But check out the Chess TV schedule. Title Tuesday is tomorrow. We all know that's big money. Sign up for Melix Game. In fact, I'm going to sell it right now. You know why? Because I need more things to do in these Chess Today shows. So I'm going to join. And now 
Melek is not just going up against the world. He's going up against me, baby girl. Let's do this thing. I guess I'm just going to vote for Night C6 because I assume that's what everybody else is going to vote for. Um, they're like, yeah, thanks, International Master. That really helps. Just go along with the crowd. But all right, uh, sign up for Melek's vote chess game. It's a lot of fun. Look for me tomorrow on Chess TV for Chess Today and Amateur Hour. Then we have Title Tuesday. I think Grandmaster Eric Hansen is hosting. Either that or Amon Hamilton, one of those chess bras with the funky hair. And then on Wednesday, we have a celebrity chess match for charity. Uh, Mr. Sean Hutchinson, the one, the only Hutch versus John Urschel, uh, the legend, the NFL player, wannabe chess master. Going to be a ton of fun on Wednesday. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and I will see you later.